Hey what's up people, welcome to my review and in-depth analysis of Star Wars Volume 3 Rebel Girl which was written by Brian Wood and illustrated by Stefan Cretti. And you know I was quite surprised with this volume. I totally thought that this would be a weak story arc based off two things. Based off what we're told at the end of Volume 2 which was that the whole... The whole um, setup to this story was that Princess Leia was going to have to marry a prince on a specific planet in order to secure a new rebel base, right? So this takes place between episodes 4 and 5, and the rebels are looking for a new base. So here we go again with kind of the whole setup that we had in the Bantam era expanded universe novel the courtship of princess leia which i thought was a very underwhelming novel i never liked that one i mean it's not the worst thing ever written but at the same time i thought it was uninteresting and boring and the only good thing that came out of that novel was that han and leia were the ones that got married right and han got jealous he was very unhappy and here this is taking place before their romance even flourished, but it's a similar setup, right? And I and I was just kind of like, ah, oh, man, this is going to be a weak story arc. Here we go with Princess Leia basically committing to this marriage out of duty, not because she actually loves the prince, right? And you know that this thing isn't going to go down because we've seen the movies. So it kind of felt like, ah, this is going to be boring and uninteresting. But you know what? I was very surprised. This was actually a very good story. Right? I was really surprised. And it doesn't dwell too much on romance and courtship. It really gets going right away. And I really enjoyed that. I totally went into this volume thinking that it was going to suck. And it actually turned out to be really good. I was, I was pleasantly surprised. I really was. And another thing that I thought that was kind of off-putting was just the title, Rebel Girl. Uh, it sounds a little infantile, I mean, out of all the titles you could have picked. And at the end of the day, even though I enjoyed this volume, I still don't know if that title was the most appropriate, right? Um... I get why they called it Rebel Girl because at the end of the day, Leia is committed to the rebellion. That's why she's getting married. Uh, she's doing it out of duty and she has discussions with the prince who she's supposed to marry. And, and the prince basically wants her to basically give up that lifestyle and be his wife. And she's like, no, I am committed to the rebellion. So I get it. But I just think it's kind of a weak title. But like I said, this one turned out to be very good. I was pleasantly surprised. Now, there was one thing that I did not like about this volume. And that was the artwork by Stefan Cretti. I mean, he is fine when he's drawing things like X-Wings and Rebel bases and planets. But he, I'm just going to say, it, he sucks at drawing faces like every single face from every single character was just like unrecognizable to me luke did not look like luke han did not look like han leia did not look like leia um and they all have like this elongated kind of chin thing going on and 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 i just really did not like it at all like i mean i can draw better than this I'm sorry, but if, and I'm not even a big artist, but if I can draw better than you and you're a, you know, you're a professional, you get paid to do this, then something is, something's wrong, right? <laughs> but, you know, uh, I digress. It's not the worst artwork that I've ever seen. However, at the same time, following the first two volumes, this one, it was kind of a letdown as far as the faces go, but good thing that the story was great, right? And that I really enjoyed it. And yeah, it was a surprise. So let's get started with this review and in-depth analysis of Star Wars Volume 3, Rebel Girl, which was originally released by Dark Horse Comics and ran from 
2013 to 2014. So right around the release of The Force Awakens is when this series ended. And that's when Marvel came in and, and started to release their own timeline of comics. So our story begins on the planet Aerochar. And basically, like I previously stated, Leia is going to marry the prince in order to secure a new rebel base. Leia is doing this out of duty. And there's a nice character moment between Wedge and Leia. Because Leia is insistent that she is doing this out of duty. But Wedge questions her as to whether she's actually doing it to fill a void. And that void which was left behind as a result of the destruction of her home planet Alderaan. I really like this little moment because it makes Leia think about her decisions. Now, in the beginning of this uh, story, we see Luke spying on the prince, Prince Caspar. He's spying on Luke and Leia, and not much is divulged as to why Luke is doing this as far as literally and exactly why but it's all through inference and the reader can conclude it's because Luke has a little bit of feelings for Leia because he is not aware that Leia is his sister yeah we know this is kind of weird <laughs> we could thank George Lucas for this for the contrivance he created by making Leia Luke's sister in Return of the Jedi when you know that he had a whole other character in mind, but at the time he didn't want to do episode seven, eight, and nine and reveal that. So, yeah. So now when we see this, these little moments where Luke kind of ponders his feelings for Leia, it's 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 incestuous. Let's not lie. It's weird, but yeah. So Luke is feeling a little weird about this whole marriage thing, and uh, yeah. It eventually leads somewhere, so bear with me here. Now, Luke, his behavior is kind of weird. Um, he, he basically hops in the X-Wing to do a test run, and Luke is reckless. He kind of wants to show off, and as a result of this, Wedge has him grounded, and Luke is not happy about this uh, reprimand from Wedge. But Wedge is the leader of Rogue Squadron, and that's just the way it is. Now, something that has to be noted is that the Aerochars, the pilots, don't care about Wedge's tactics. They want new fighters. So basically, you have the Rebellion trying to integrate the Aerochar military and fighter pilots into, the, into the, their military or work together. And the Rebellion is unwilling to give them new, new ships. And Wedge is like, no... The ship doesn't matter. What matters is tactics. Listen to us. We're the ones that destroyed the first Death Star. And the Aerochars are like, you know what? We don't care. What we need is new ships. And on the surface, Wedge seems like he disagrees. But he he lets Leia know that they're right. That what they need is new equipment. They need new ships. New fighter planes or whatever. And uh, yeah. At this time moment Luke is trying to reach Ben but there's no response so Luke is still trying to hear something from Ben Kenobi but there's no response at least not right now and in regards to what's going on with Han Solo Han is just trying to figure out why Leia would marry some random prince just to secure a new rebel base, right? So Han obviously has feelings for Leia, but he hasn't told her anything. And he's just kind of like, why would she do this? This does not seem like everybody thinks that, oh yeah, this is kind of what Leia would do because she always puts the rebellion first and she's doing this out of a sense of duty. But Han is calling out, he's, he's basically like bullshit. This is not Leia. Leia wouldn't do something like this. There's something else going on. I can't figure out why she would do this. She's being silly, right? Always got to appreciate Han's sarc uh, cynicism and Han's, you know, just how he just keeps it real, right? He's just honest. He's very transparent. Always appreciated that about the character. Now, Caspar, Prince Caspar, 
and the Royals are kind of embarrassed by Leia, right? Because she's still rolling around with the Rebels, still working on, just you know, still doing maintenance, still working with tools, still being basically a soldier of the Rebellion. And they're embarrassed by her because they feel like she's just doing something. And she's basically, they feel that she's basically engaging with the lower class. And they look down on the lower class people, right? And Leia's like, look, you don't get it, man. I'm a soldier. I'm part of the rebellion. I'm not just going to like marry you and then dress up in dresses so you could parade me around like some Barbie, you know? And I always appreciated that about the character. And, you know, I said this about Volume 1. I said this about Volume 2. And I got to say this about Volume 3. This series really gives us an awesome Princess Leia. Like, really, if you love Princess Leia, you owe it to yourself to read this series. Because, man, they really do her character justice. She is a, she is strong. She is fierce. She is wise and she kicks ass in this series. I really love this series because of how they treated Princess Leia. Now, since Luke is grounded by Wedge, Luke basically takes it upon himself to go on a mission with the Arachar Mountain Rangers. Now, an Imperial super hauler uh, ship basically arrives at Arachar, which is droid operated. And this kind of alarms everybody, right? Because this is supposed to be a secret base. They don't want anybody to find, find out that this is the home of the rebellion, especially the Imperials. But one thing that has to be noted that's very important is that this super hauler ship is sending a distress signal. So apparently the ship got lost and just coincidentally ended up at Arachar. And now it's sending out this distress signal trying to find its way. Right. Han and Leia and C-3PO go to investigate this. Right. Now, Luke, he needs to go and replace a damaged fuel cell for the defense of the planet at the top of some mountain. So this is basically the mission that he has to undertake with the mountain rangers now the soldiers they they basically tell luke look we don't want you guys here so the soldiers tell luke we do not want the rebellion here but nevertheless we respect you as a soldier because they see that luke he is he's a tough guy right the, even though he's not used to the the climate even though he's not used to the altitude Luke keeps pressing on. He's strong, right? And they, they respect him for that to, to a certain degree. You just got to hang in there because something's about to happen, right? Now, it turns out that the, the hauler suffered da a data failure or something like that, right? So that's why this hauler, this super hauler got lost. And C-3PO is able to provide the hauler the navigation information that it needs in order to get going, right? So the hauler, now that it has its navigation information that it needed, takes off. However, you see that an Imperial probe droid has been left behind. And you know right here that this, this planet Arachar is not going to be the new base for the Rebellion. And it's at this point in the story that Ben Kenobi warns Luke of an evil that is about to reveal itself. And right after this moment, the mountain rangers try to kill Luke. And then here we have the big twist, which is that Arochar has chosen to side with the Empire. And that a Star Destroyer is coming. And at this point in the story, it's unknown as to whether the prince is also part of this scheme or whether the prince is naive to everything that's going on because throughout the story there's this general right and this general he's basically 
always with the prince, always uh, telling him things. And up to this point in the story, what he's been telling him is it's very ambiguous. It's kind of hard to discern, like, is he being deceitful? Are they being deceitful? Are they working together to, to do something malicious to the rebellion? Or are they just talking about, you know, something trivial? Well, we know now that this general, at the very least, was malicious. And Leia, she is unaware of basically that the Arachars have chosen the Empire. And she's about to get married to the prince. And she's very sad, right? She's not happy to be, to be getting married to this guy. She's sad. She feels lonely. Now, Luke is basically on the run from the mountain rangers who were hunting him and Luke using his uh his Jedi skills even though he's a little bit of a novice cuz he hasn't met Yoda yet he's able to he's able to to be resourceful and outmaneuver the attempts at his life by the mountain rangers and ultimately what happens is that Ardana comes to Luke's rescue in in her X-wing right Luke is her wingman, so she was basically monitoring his activities, and she comes to Luke's rescue. Now, the general sets off this bomb on Leia's wedding day at the palace, and it's right here where everything reveals itself, because as this bomb goes off, the Imperials arrive. Three Star Destroyers, not just one, but three. Now, Luke wants to warn Leia, but he's been banned. So, a couple of times throughout this story, Luke and other rebels have been trying to to go just speak to Leia, right? We just want to talk to Leia. But the guards, the royal guards, no longer allow common folk to talk to Leia because now she's going to be the queen of this planet. And they're still doing it, right? Even though Luke has an urgent message or something urgent to tell Leia, the royal guards are still banning Leia's friends and and officers from speaking to her. Now, Vader is not present in this story too much, but we do get to see him at the very end or like the, I guess I want to say the last act, if you want to call it that. And Basically, Darth Vader orders a planetary bombardment of the planet. And he really doesn't care about the civilians. And even the officers are like, what? 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 Wait a minute. And Vader's like, they're just collateral damage. So here we have Darth Vader being the ruthless, evil Sith Lord. And he's just basically like, destroy the rebels at all costs. I do not care about collateral damage. I don't care about civilians. I do not care about cities or anything like that. Complete planetary bombardment. (laughs) And it gets underway. Now, Leia brought a blaster to her wedding. And I I just had to note that because I thought that was so like Princess Leia. And when I saw that, it was like, okay, this guy, Brian Wood, really understands this character right this is why i love this series because they do princess leia such justice right so leia brought a blaster to her wedding and she starts uh fighting back with mon mothma at her side while all this chaos is going down and the prince so this is where we find out that the prince had no idea that the general made an alliance with the Empire. And the Prince kills the General, right? So this whole time, the Prince has been kind of coming off like a weakling, you know, like he doesn't have have it in him to fight back. But surprisingly, he kills the General as soon as he finds out what the General did, which was side with the Empire. And as the general dies, the general reveals to the prince that he killed his parents, which was cold, right? And one thing I like about this uh, prince was that 
even though his planet is basically known now to the Empire, and now that they know that they were welcoming to the Rebellion, this means that this planet is in for a long haul of, of a fight against the Empire because they're going to be coming at this planet now that they know that they attempted to side with the Rebellion. However, the Prince is like, I am committed. I'm going to stay on my planet and I'm going to fight for my people because the Rebels, they invited the Prince and his people to join the Alliance. But they were like, no, we're going to stay here and we're going to fight for the freedom of our planet, right? Now, Leia and Mon Mothma end up escaping in a shuttle. And ultimately, what ends up saving the day against the Empire were these iron cannons that the rebels were able to establish during their short duration on the planet Erichar. So these ion cannons overwhelm the Imperials and the Rebels are able to escape because basically the ion cannons just completely, they're like EMP, right? They're like EMP's electromagnetic pulse. They completely disable all the electronics in the Star Destroyers. So this is how the Rebels are able to escape. Now, as a result of the Rebels escaping, Darth Vader is furious and he never wants to to be on the sidelines ever again because there was a sequence earlier in this in this volume where Vader was like I should be the one there. I shouldn't be here on Coruscant watching from the sidelines. But the emperor is like, "Look, man, you overestimate the value of the rebels." You to them to you, rather, you think that they're this big enemy that have to be fought. But to me, they're just a fly in my in my face, just buzzing around. And Vader is basically reprimanded for placing such high value, his hunt for the rebels, right? But now, as a result of this failure, another failure, Vader vows... Never to be on the sidelines ever again in regards to the hunt for the rebels. He is going to lead it. He is going to be there front and center. And he's he's especially kind of uh, upset with Palpatine over this. Now, Leia feels guilty about Arachar because basically, in a way, she led the Empire to that planet. And this is just basically how she's seeing it, right? And, you know, and that's how this volume ends. It ends with Leia feeling that way. And I like how this series gives us a lot with Princess Leia. Because, you know, even though I appreciate what was in the movies, we didn't get too into what she feels about things, right? But this series does, and that's why... I really love it and why I highly recommend it. I saw nothing wrong with this volume other than the art for the faces. So I want to give this this volume an A minus because even though the art could have been better, I liked the story. I really did. It was surprisingly good. And uh, I can't wait to read the fourth volume, which will be the last one. So there you go. That brings us to the end of this review for Star Wars Volume 3, Rebel Girl, released by Dark Horse Comics. If you enjoyed the review, please like, subscribe, and share. May the Force be with you. And last but not least, one love, people. Take care.